Welcome to At Home with Music. I'm Leon Olguin. Let's take a look in this video at another famous Christmas carol. This one came to mind when I was watching a video, The Ray Conniff Christmas Show, Voices of Christmas. That was recorded way back in 1965. I'll leave a link for this video, by the way, because it's a wonderful slice of life from the 1960s. The Ray Conniff singers, they all look like the nicest people you'd ever want to meet. And the music will definitely put you in the Christmas spirit. You know, the arrangements that they sing, they're very straightforward and, and really quite beautiful. So I encourage you to take a look at that. Anyway, one of the carols they sang near the start of the video was this famous carol, We Three Kings. So let's look at a little bit of the history of this carol, and then I will show you how to play it in a very simple way, and then show you some different ways that you can play this particular song. We Three Kings, the original title of it was Three Kings of Orient. And some people just call this We Three Kings, or they, they call it We Three Kings of Orient R. It's even referred to as the Quest of the Magi. This carol was written by John Henry Hopkins Jr. in 1857. I couldn't find a picture of him, so here's a picture of his father, who was a very, very famous clergyman. At the time of composing this carol, Hopkins served as the rector of Christ Episcopal Church in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. He wrote the carol for a Christmas pageant that was to be held in New York City. And one interesting thing about this particular Christmas carol is that Hopkins composed both the lyrics and the music. Contemporary hymn writers in his day usually wrote either the lyrics or the music, but not both. It was originally titled Three Kings of Orient. And at first it was sung within his circle of family and friends, and of course they liked it, and it became very popular. And he eventually decided to publish the carol in 1863 in his book, Carols, Hymns, and Songs. And so this Christmas carol was the first widely popular Christmas carol written in America. We Three Kings centers around the biblical magi who visited Jesus as a child in a house sometime after his nativity. And they gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh while paying homage to him. So <laughs> these guys, they weren't actually there when Jesus was born and lying in a manger, contrary to what you might see in various nativity scenes. Now you can read about these guys in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2. Interestingly, Matthew doesn't tell us their names. They are simply referred to as wise men. We don't even know how many of them there were. It could have been three, could have been 30. And Matthew doesn't tell us that they were actually kings or that they were oriental. We traditionally have the names of these magi as Melchor, Caspar, and Belfaz Belfazar. <laughs> They're a little hard for me to remember how to pronounce. And the fact that they were kings from the Orient, well, this is all legendary and it's based on tradition. And the number three stems from the fact that three separate gifts were given. Now, if you examine the text of We Three Kings, you'll notice that it's organized in such a way that three male voices would each sing a solo verse in order to correspond with the three kings. So take a look at the text. We three kings of Orient are, bearing gifts we traverse afar. So you got the three kings singing together in this verse. Field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. So now they've mentioned this star that they're following, and so they sing of its beauty, the beauty of the star of Bethlehem in the refrain. O star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. And so in verse 2, we have Caspar, one of the, of the three kings of Orient, singing about the gift that he's bringing to Jesus. Born a king on Bethlehem plain, gold I bring to crown him again, king forever, ceasing never over us all to reign. And then they, the three kings join together and sing the chorus, sing the refrain. Now Melchor, 
The second king, frankincense to offer have I, incense, oaths, a deity nigh, prayer and praising, all men raising, worshiping him, God on high. But now we have the third king, Balthazar, singing, myrrh is mine, its bitter perfume, breathes the life of gathering gloom, sorrowing, sighing, bleeding, dying, sealed in the tomb, or sealed in the stone-cold tomb. Myrrh was used to dress a body that was in the tomb, so it's looking forward to Jesus' death. But now they sing together in the last verse, Glorious, now behold him arise, King and God and sacrifice. Heaven sings, Alleluia, Alleluia, the earth replies. The first and last verses of We Three Kings are sung together by all three kings. These are verses of praise. And then the middle three verses are sung individually by each king as they describe the gift that they were bringing to Jesus. Now, of course, when we sing this carol today, everyone sings all the verses. Sometimes when uh, there's not a lot of time, they skip some of the verses. Too bad. People should really sing all the verses. But now let's take a look at the music. And what I'm going to do is show you some ways to play this carol and give you a chance to play along with me. And in order to make this easier for you, I'm going to switch to the overhead camera. All right, let's take a look at this famous Christmas carol. And you can see that we are in the key of E minor. The first thing you want to do is get familiar with the tune. Just play the tune by itself. See, it's not too difficult to play. All right, so that is the verse. And this particular arrangement that I've taken out of some hymnal, I'm not exactly sure which one, but you can see that the chords have already been written in for us. So when you're playing a hymn like this, and you're just getting started with chords and melody, we can play the chords in the left hand. And so you want to go through the chords and see what you've got to work with here. We've got an E minor, and then you can play a B7. And the easiest way, instead of playing it like this, play it this way in first inversion. And you see your hand doesn't have to move that much. And then it goes from E minor to D. And then G. And so by using different inversions, I can keep my left hand from having to jump around. So many different ways to play it. Now, when you're learning to play a song, of course, you want to remember to start out slowly. So what I'm doing is playing a chord at the beginning of every measure and playing the melody, of course, in the right hand. E minor, B7, E minor, and it repeats. And we have the second part of the verse. Now we get to the refrain. It starts with a D7 chord. Now the interesting thing about We Three Kings is that the refrain is actually in a different key than the verse. The verse is in E minor, but then it modulates by simply going to this D7 chord, which is not actually part of the E minor scale. So we're borrowing this chord from the key of G, and now the chorus is in the key of G. So 
there's a tricky part in the middle of the refrain where it changes chords on every beat. And you'll find that this actually changes chords on every time the melody changes a note, the chord changes as well. Right here, G, D, G, C, G, D, G. Now, if that's too many chords for you to play, you can actually simplify it by just playing G, and then C, and then D. One of the nice things about this style of piano playing is that you can alter it to make it a little more comfortable for yourself if you find yourself running into something that's that's kind of throwing you off. Now, ultimately, of course, you want to play it. You, know, you want to challenge yourself, too. Don't always try to make it as easy as you can. Anyway, so this is where you're playing it with just block chords in the left hand. It sounds pretty good that way. Now, here's an accompaniment figure that you can use in the left hand just to make it a little bit more interesting, a little bit different. You remember in a previous video, I talked about Alberti bass. It's basically, we're going to use this variation of it. We're taking the chord, the E minor chord and all the other chords, and we're going to break it into an arpeggio. And since we're in 3-8 time, it kind of works out really nice. We have three note chords and three beats per measure. So we have this accompaniment figure and we play the melody over it. You might have to go a little bit slow at first, but it's okay. Right there, we had two chords in the measure, so if I continue to outline the E minor chord, we just happen to end up on a B, which works with a B7 chord. Or you could also play like that. Now we get to the chorus. Since we have a fermata, that hold sign there, we can just play a block chord and then go back to our three note pattern. Now notice what happens here. Hands kind of colliding, and so we let the right hand play the melody, and it actually works out so that it becomes the third note of the chord. Now you'll notice that if we're using this arpeggiated pattern, it, it, you have to simplify the chords there in that last line, westward leading, still proceeding. Now you may be able to figure out another way to do that. It might end up looking like this. Once again, the rule that you follow in this style of playing is if it sounds good, it's good. And most likely other people listening to you will like it as well. So what I'm going to do now is play through this using the block chord melody version and give you a chance to play along. And then I'll play it once more using the arpeggio pattern in the left hand. I'm going to play it rather slowly and give you a chance to play along. You ready? Here we go. One, two, three, one, ready, go.
is the arpeggio accompaniment version, or the Alberti bass, if you like. One, two, three, one, ready, go. One other thing to mention is if somebody is singing this and you simply want to accompany them, you don't need to play the melody necessarily. You can simply create an accompaniment figure. And so it might be something like this. get really fancy. Whoops. <laughs> Play it that way, not the way I just played it at first. <laughs> That's just a couple of the different ways that you can play this Christmas carol, either as a soloist or as an accompanist. So if you have any questions, please be sure to leave those in the comment section and I will definitely respond. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you for watching and I look forward to speaking to you in the next one. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. A majority of my viewers are not subscribed. So you can help the channel out by hitting that subscribe button and the like button too while you're at it. Thanks again, and I look forward to speaking to you in the next one.